Hi, I'm going to be scrapbooking a layout today using the Girl kit from Scraptastic, which is the September kit. And to start off, I'm just waiting for my picture to print here. And so I'm not sh completely sure, but I'm thinking I'm going to use these two butterfly uh, pieces that came in the kit. This one that I'm uh, using gelatos on right now is a uh, paper die cut from the kit. It's exclusive to the kit. And then the one beside it is a wood veneer that I just wanted to give it a bit of a whitewash, so I just misted it with some white Mr. Hueys. And now I'm just kind of getting this uh, getting this die cut really wet to make the colors of the gelatos kind of blend together and look a little bit like watercolor. Just adding a little bit more water here. I was quite heavy handed on this. I wanted it to be really bright and I hadn't used this these shades before so I wasn't sure how much I needed to apply. So um, Now I'm just going to tone it down a little bit by misting, by just adding some white ink splatter so that it's not um, such a solid looking color and while I was at it I just added some mist drops to the white butterflies too just to you know give it a little bit more interest and I'm thinking I might use those butterflies as layers in this layout so I'm going to set them aside to dry I was doing this on my Tim Holtz craft mat, which is heat proof and waterproof, so you could dry things on there if you wanted to. I'm just going to uh, dry dry it by air on my little piece of paper towel. And this mat does come clean, it's just I need to take it upstairs and wash it in some like hot water. Uh, so that's why it doesn't come completely clean because I've got some paint on there from a mixed media project I was doing. Now I normally would use my heat gun on the on the Tim Holtz mat because I don't want to warp my Martha Stewart mat which is the gray one that you see under my work surface all the time. Um, so I just held that up in the air. I decided afterwards that maybe I will dry it after all. Uh, so anyways. I'm just picking off some of the little gooey pieces of gelato that stuck behind in the grooves of the uh, little intricate pieces of the die cut. And now with this, I'm just kind of thinking about putting something heavy on it so that it will dry a little bit more flat. I'm just washing off my hands with a baby wipe. And uh, now I'm getting ready to actually get to work. So I'll let those dry a little bit while I pull out some papers. This is the photo that I was waiting for. It is a printed at 3.5 by 4.8 and I want to put it on a background paper that's fairly neutral. I do want to use a pattern paper but I don't want it to be um, a terribly busy pattern paper. So I'm really loving that ombre paper that goes from a very navy blue and very quickly it, it moves to a light blue. I love, love, love that paper. It's by Pink Paisley and you can see at the very bottom where the blue, where the dark blue starts to fade into the light blue, there's some bokeh effect down there, like just the very faint circle shapes that I really love and I want to leave showing. So. I'm going to design this layout around the idea of leaving the bottom showing and so I'm just going to put a assortment of pattern papers here and just kind of making a horizontal strip across this layout just with torn pieces of pattern paper. I do want the paper to extend off of the right side because it extends off of the left side so that's why I added one more piece of paper there. Uh, so the papers I have are um, the two ones that have circles on them are from uh, pink, they're, no they're from Teresa Collins from the Some, Something Wonderful and it's I'm using both the A and the B sides. Then the pink pattern paper is from Pink Paisley Solstice and uh, that text paper, the blue text Next is also Teresa Collins. And all of these die cuts are Heidi Swap die cuts that came in the kit. And I'm just picking out, there in this uh, set of die cut pieces by Heidi Swap, there are some vellum pieces and some cardstock pieces. And I'm picking out a couple of navy blue uh, pieces because I want to use navy blue as my accent color. But I also am picking out some die cuts that have phrases on them, like one says memories, that yellow one says fun is a head, be prepared to laugh, today is going to be a wonderful day, I think it says. It's, a lot of it is covered. 
Uh, and I'm going to use this uh, journaling piece here as a little hidden journaling tag that's going to stick behind my layout. I want to decorate the piece that sticks up a little bit so that it doesn't look so plain. So I'm just going to apply these Chamel rub-ons from American Crafts. They came in the kit and they're really cute. They've got these two layered hearts in different shades of pink and red and then also a gold saying over it. I can't quite make out the gold saying though because it's very faint. So I love how that looks and I'm not going to do my journaling until the very very end but I'm just going to leave it there to hold the space so I know where it will go. Moving around my letters and embellishments and taking a look at the stamps to think about whether I might want to use some of them. And now it's kind of bugging me that the that the paper on the right side is smaller than the paper on the left side of the layout where it, where it hangs off the edge and I thought about fixing that by adding another piece of paper and then I decided no I think I'll just leave it a little bit off sent off kilter like that adding a doily from my stash I just felt like it needed something soft behind that tag the tag has harsh edges it's very square even though the tag the tag part itself like the little tab is rounded it has some really harsh corners on it um, on the other side so I'm just putting that butterfly under my my dish so that it will flatten out the wood veneer butterfly and then I took this uh, die cut butterfly that I so that I changed the color of with gelatos and I'm thinking about layering it above that uh, hidden journaling tag there I really want to use this butterfly clip because it's beautiful and it's the shade of blue that I'm wanting to use as an accent color in this layout. But if I use it, um, it, it was kind of off bat. I didn't want so many butterflies over on the left hand side and so I had to bring it over to the right side of the photo so that there wouldn't be so many butterflies all together. Uh, thinking about putting this under a layer somewhere and I'm quickly abandoning that idea. I'll just hang on to that for something else, for another project. So I have a couple of Heidi Swap uh, journaling cards, some of the bigger pieces. They're, they're not actually not journaling cards, they're just die cut printed pieces. And um, I have one beside the photo on the right and two beside the photo on the left and then also that piece of vellum there is also from Heidi Swap. Pulled out a couple of wood veneers and I really love the today how it kind of drapes underneath the journaling card at the top and I really love that there and I'm thinking I'm probably going to leave it plain just to have a little bit of neutral uh, a little bit of a neutral element on this layout. And if I leave the today plain, I'm also planning to leave the, um, the flowers plain. So at this point I haven't actually adhered down very much. I don't think I've adhered anything at this point. So um, I'm going to need to start taking things apart and putting them back together again soon. But I need a little bit of navy blue down in this corner just to balance out the navy blue in the other places on the layout. I need a third place. So um, I am also going to put some up by my little cluster by the journaling tag, but that will come later. So I'm kind of looking for some elements. I love the love ya, but I don't really like that shape of a tag very much. I rarely use those. Um, and while I was pulling through it, I noticed that that mostly pink embellishment that I slipped under the edge there has actually a strip of navy blue numbers at the bottom and that might do the trick. I left out one of those other navy blue pieces in case I want even more navy blue. So now it's really time. I've got a lot of things out. It's time to start gluing things down before I start getting overwhelmed by all the stuff I have to kind of layer above and below one another. So I usually do some gluing before this so um, yeah I'm feeling a little bit like I got to get stuff glued down. So I'm starting by um, adding those die cuts which is a funny order but I'm just kind of like I'm starting at the top doing a little bit and then I'm going to go to the bottom and do a little bit of the bottom layers. So I'm pretty sure I know how I want these to fit on the overall shape of the page and I need to be careful that I don't put any glue under where I want that uh, journaling tag to slip in. So I might have put those back slightly different but I do like the look that it is right now. So the look that I'm getting right now. So see how I just glued on the outside edges and I didn't glue in the middle? That allows me to have some flexibility about where I'm going to stick that tag. So I'm just going to cut the top off of that a little bit 
and slip it down there. And I'm adding a couple of pop dots here and there just to add a bit of dimension so that these layers look like they're slightly peeled back and aging a little bit. I'm not doing any outlining on this layout because I want the layers to look light and airy like a butterfly and so I don't want to make them heavy by outlining at all so I'm not doing that on this layout. So I'm at this point I'm mostly just putting things back the way that I had originally planned for them to be adding a bit of adhesive to my doily and deciding how much I want it to stick out. I'm going to stick those butterflies back where I had them originally and I'm adding some glue. I shouldn't have added glue to the bottom because um, I, you'll see me I'm going to peel it up right here and, and I'm just rolling it over with my finger. Uh, that just allows my, my journaling tag to still fit in there nicely and slide in and out without getting stuck on the butterflies. So now I almost forgot to put this little piece of, a, of vellum back in. I really like this. It's a little triangle pattern from the Heidi Swap uh, ephemera pack or die cut pack. And I'm going to slip this fun as a head yellow die cut. I really love the color of it. It's this beautiful mustard color. And um, it's also, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not concerned about the fact that I'm covering some of the text because you can kind of tell what it says just by seeing the, the little tops of the corners. I fiddled a little bit with it so that it was placed in such a way that you can see that it is the word ahead underneath of there if you really tried to figure it out. Um, and the phrasing you can figure out is pretty predictable. Be prepared to laugh, it says. Now I'm going to do a tiny bit of journaling on this and you'll see me here kind of ghost writing. I'm going to write out without actually writing just to see how big my letters are going to be. Um, and the phrase I had planned to put on wasn't uh, fitting so I changed my mind and I put uh, stopped at this covered bridge for climbing and posing. And I do some more elaborate journaling at the end. So I'll save that for the end. Just making sure that I don't have any color under my fingers or on my knuckles because I uh, don't want to get my layout dirty. Although it is going to get dirty. As you will see towards the, towards the end, I'm going to, when it's almost finished, like I have one more thing to add to the layout, I'm going to make a huge mistake and have to completely change the direction that this layout goes in. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. So I'm just layering this uh, wood veneer flower in such a way that I can put a pop dot underneath of it and the Just Believe navy blue tag is going to cover it. And I'm really running out of this mono multi adhesive by Tombow. And uh, I squirted too much on because it, I was getting impatient with it coming out and I squeezed too hard. And I'm going to be okay with there not being three here. There's not, there's two flowers came in the kit. And uh, I'm thinking about adding a bow tie here as a third element, but it's looking out of place. So I'm not going to do that. But these gold hearts really caught my eye. I feel like I need something else down here with these two flowers. Uh, just something else. And so I'm going to cut a couple of these little gold rub-ons, again from the Chamel rub-on sheet. And I'm going to lay them there, and I'm also going to put a couple right there, and a couple right there. Just to kind of frame in the uh, layout, and it puts, it just gives a little bit of interest on that bottom layer of my, my background canvas. I love the just the very slight little bit of glitteriness to the I mean they're quite glittery but they don't they're not um, they're kind of like a matted glitter so it's uh, I really like how it looks it's very metallic looking without being glittery looking those rub-ons work beautifully I'm really pleased with them 
So I know I need a navy blue element up here, but I don't know what it is. And I think I love bow ties so much. I wish I could put a bow tie up there. I'm thinking about maybe stamping and cutting it out, stamping in navy blue and, and cutting it out. And uh, I'm just thinking if only one of these bows were navy blue, it would be perfect. And I even thought about maybe inking one of the bows navy blue and then I thought you know what I've got a stash full of bows so I might as well use one of them and this studio calico ribbon bow is perfect so I'm going to use that then I also pulled out since just it was in one of the compartments beside it these little butterfly pins from Maya Road they're cute little white pins and uh, I had another I found another navy blue little flag in there I think it's from Studio Calico but I uh, decided not to use it I didn't want to go overboard with the navy so I'm just using my Tombow mono multi liquid adhesive to put that bow in place and it's just kind of at the base of where the butterflies are coming out I really like how it looks now I don't want to glue these pins right down I could glue the pins right down on the uh, paper just by putting a bit of glue on the butterfly itself uh, but instead I'm going to let them float a little bit because I just want to it ends up being good that I did it that way because I'm gonna put something under them when I make my big huge mistake at the end but um, for whatever reason I decided to glue the pin and not the butterfly to the page I'm thinking that butterfly makes a really nice single accent but it makes an even nicer cluster so I'm going to add a second butterfly right there beside it really like how that looks and while I'm at it I might as well put two more in down here in this corner that otherwise was looking a little bare so that gives me a chance to put a little something in there and now these ones I am going to glue the butterfly instead of the pins. They're more likely to stay exactly where you want them to be when you glue the butterfly instead of the pin. So now I'm thinking about my title and grabbed myself a piece of waxed paper and I'm starting to write out my title which is covered bridge shenanigans um, I was trying to think of something else to do like my sister's posing there really cool and um, I was it's kind of it's me and my two daughters and my sister and I was thinking about putting something about you know the banks ladies or something like that um, but I'm the kind of person I love to work the word shenanigans into the English language whenever I can so this is a great opportunity for me to use the word shenanigans one of my favorite words so um, I'm going to put this on here I, I these cream letter stickers came in the kit and they're by October afternoon those those glittery beautiful letters that I used for covered bridge are from pink paisley that came in the solstice collection and they came in the kit and these letter stickers also came in the kit I think these ones were in the add-on not too sure uh, but I love these daily flash they're like a retro cursive font it's really beautiful looks good for a playful title especially where the word shenanigans is such a playful word I'm kind of toying with the idea of you know like covered bridge is engineering it's structured and so I'm using like a block font that's very kind of structured and clean for the word covered bridge and then shenanigans is playful concept so I'm using a more playful text I am going to ink that text because otherwise you're not going to see it very well and I'm big on readability for titles I love layouts that have those beautiful wispy titles that blend in and you can barely see them and I think that's a really beautiful look but I can't do it I just can't master that look so I always go for a more readable uh, title someday I might play around with the idea of doing it the other way but for me I am going to ink this in navy blue something that ends up being a mistake well not a, not a mistake but it leads to a mistake so I thought about using a Stampin Up pad but I thought if I could just use this uh, Prima ink pad instead is so much smaller and easier to handle than a giant ink pad. I would have been better off using the giant ink pad because this one is actually broken. It broke in transit, I think. And um, so that pad is not attached to that green 
pad holder that I'm that I'm holding on to and I'm aware of that because it fell out open as I as I opened it but I'm gonna forget about that later and make a big mistake because of it so I'm gonna start by going ahead I'm letting those letters dry because they will take a while to dry because it's chalk ink it's not uh, it's not um, what am I looking for dye ink so I'm going to place these. I'm just trying to do my best to make them straight. I'm trying not to obsess over it too much. Checked with my ruler. It looks pretty straightish to me, so I'm going to go with it. I don't know where I'm at right now. Um, yes, and now I'm going to put the word bridge underneath of it. all the while the uh, other letters are hopefully drying so there we go covered bridge is on there now and I love how that looks that color looks really great with the other colors um, so yes I'm thinking I'm probably going to break up the word shenanigans into shenanny and gins so <laughs> I'm working backwards from the I because I wanted it to end in a certain place and so it'll just be as long as it needs to be and I need to keep on because the letters aren't completely dry I'm impatient and um, the letters aren't completely dry so I have to keep on cleaning my knuckles and my fingertips just to make sure that I'm not getting blue ink on anything as I place letters my knuckles often hit my layout so I need to be really careful that my knuckles are clean when I'm placing a title so there's Shenani, which is a funny word in and of itself. <laughs> I had to take out one of those pop dots. That's what you saw me tearing out from the corner of that pink paper. And uh, now I'm going to have to glue down that paper so that my, my second half of shenanigans will sit properly on the page. So there we are, and now here, if I had just left it like this, but see, I decided to add the um, add a little hyphen, which I really didn't need a hyphen. But when I went to ink the hyphen, look, a giant piece of that um, that ink pad hit my background paper, and a giant ink pad shaped splot happened on my layout and I was actually incredibly disappointed about that because I really wanted this layout to be a horizontal band across and to really play on the ombre effect and to oh, I just really wanted it to be a band but it's not just going to be a band it's going to be a band with some flourishes above and below so <laughs> it is what it is right that those Heidi Swap circle stickers were the perfect size to cover up a Prima ink pad uh, stray splot, so that was good that those letter stickers came in the kit. And so I'm just going to place some of these circle stickers, they're rings with uh, circles inside of them, and you can separate them out if you want to. So I'm putting some of the circles up by where the ink splot was, and then so that they don't look out of place, I'm putting a couple more down here. That's a little bit too much. What I'm trying to do here is get some pink down here because there's pink in the rings above, but uh, that's just too much, so I'm not going to do that. It doesn't look Look quite right like those rings are all the same sizes so I'm looking for something that I can punch some smaller circles out of so that it can be a, like a variety of different sizes of circles so I'm just using the pattern paper that I've already used on this layout and I used a one inch punch and now I'm using a three quarter inch punch to punch the inside out of it but they don't I don't want it to shift around so I have to attach it to another piece of paper using some temporary adhesive and then I get these cute little rings and I also get the inside piece that I can use as a separate embellishment too. So I'm going to do the same with another ring so that way I get some variability in the sizes of the rings and circles that I'm using.
And I, this is what I'm going to do to bring some pink down to this part is I'm going to just replace one of those stickers and instead of tearing it off I'm just going to over put it over top. And now I really would have liked to have layered these rings so that one of the rings was under the circle sticker and one of the rings was over the circle sticker. As it is, they're both over, but um, it, I couldn't tear back the stickers. They were too sticky and I was going to make a mess. And I had already made a mess on this layout, so I thought I would quit while I'm ahead and just leave those rings as they are. It doesn't look too bad. Now I just need to trim off the little pieces. I like to have things go off the edge of my page for just to kind of add some energy and interest to it. And I will show you the close-ups more slowly in a second here. I just have to pull out my ink box that I use for misting and I'm going to do a couple of little splatters. I'm just going to put a piece of packaging over my photo to make sure I don't have any more mishaps. One is enough for this layout. <laughs> Um, I just used some Mr. Huey's opaque white ink mist there, drying it with my heat gun again so I don't have any more mishaps. I love the splatter, they, they made these perfect circles and I don't want them to um, smear at all so I had to heat set them. And now you can see the close up. It doesn't look too bad, it looks like they were meant to be like that, but yeah, I would have liked it to have been a horizontal strip across my background paper, but maybe I'll do that on another layout coming up. So these are the close-ups and now you'll get to see some photos shortly. Um, I did do some journaling on this card. I will read it to you. It just says, uh, the day we went to Hopewell Rocks, we caravanned around in two vehicles. We checked out the rocks at high tide. Then we drove around, stopping at various places to take pics and enjoy the New Brunswick scenery. This Covered Bridge is one of several fun places we got to see between the high and low tides. So now you'll get to see some photos. Thanks so much for watching everybody and have a great scrappy week.